Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Our topic today is psychic self-defense. With me is Dr. Terence Palmer, who is the author of The Science of Spirit Possession. He is a member of the Society for Psychical Research in the United Kingdom, as well as the Scientific and Medical Network, and he is a fellow of the Royal Society of Medicine. Welcome once again, Terry. Thank you, Jeffrey. We have in previous interviews talked about some of the dangers associated with possession, that there are cases in uh, the records from almost every culture of people who get possessed in a negative way or come under the Im some negative psychic influence, maybe not a full possession, but an obsession or uh, a harmful influence, even perhaps a harmful telepathic influence. These phenomena have been studied and researched uh, at the Society for Psychical Research for nearly 150 years now. Yes, the problem with, I suppose, the word possession is that it conjures up in people's minds generally uh, mm. things that we would perhaps see in entertainment, like films like The Exorcist and right. Rosemary's Baby and things like that. But in, in, in the real world of everyday life, um, each and every one of us is um, vulnerable mm. to some kind of spiritual influence, mm. good and bad. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and the way I've learned uh, from experience to view this is in much the same way that we physically have an immune system mm -hmm. that helps to protect us from invasion from diseases. Mm -hmm. um, uh, similarly, we have um, a spiritual immune system in the form of an etheric body and an aura. Mm -hmm. And I like, because of the work I do, I like to view this aura as, uh, as an armor, as a protection against infection. And those infections can, can be, um, very mild and accidental. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, I was uh, traveling to the United States back in 2006 to do some, some experimental work with a colleague. And um, I picked something up from the passenger in the seat next to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was revealed when uh, my colleague that I was going to visit was able to detect that and, and remove it. It was a negative energy form mm -hmm. that transferred from one person to the In other words, me. your colleague was using some form of psychic intuition to determine what had occurred. That's right. Now, when we do spirit release work, which we'll be talking about in more detail later, I know that, but the first thing we have to do is to strengthen our defense mechanism uh, and make sure it's clear. And I use uh, the term, and it's not my term, it's been used by other people um, uh, in this line of work, people like Dion Fortune, wrote a book called Psychic Self-Defense. Yes, now Dion Fortune, we you should mention, was uh, a, a mystical person uh, yes. in England. I think she would refer to herself as an occultist. Yes, that's right, yes. Um, other writers, um, David Ashworth, who was uh, a Reiki master, mm -hmm. uh, and he wrote a book called um, Dancing with the Devil. Mm -hmm. And he complains ri vigorously about people who set themselves up uh, and run courses and invite people to attend courses uh, to become a Reiki practitioner. And he points out graphically in his book the dangers of opening up to spirit um, without knowledge of the power of dark forces that can come in quite unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is to take um, the work of Fortune and the work of Ashworth and other people and people I work with and to put together um, a psychic self-defense um, protocol mm -hmm. that actually only takes seven minutes mm -hmm. to, re to, to yeah. go through. 
and uh, I've made it available to, to everyone who wants to use it. It's, it's I've recorded it and put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's on my YouTube um, channel. Um, and, and we will link to it so that uh, anyone watching the video right now will see that they can access that. Well, if we can do that, that would yeah, be... Yeah, yeah, that's doable. And uh, consider it done. Excellent. Uh -huh. Okay, so... Uh -huh. um, now, if I may, though, I want to go back because you used a term that we didn't define for our viewers, and that was the etheric body. Right. Um, going back to uh, ancient um, Indian Ayurvedic medicine, mm -hmm. um, where the um, and, and I'm not an expert on this, but yeah. I, my understanding is very simple. Mm -hmm. The the aura is made up of layers. Yes, and um, we have the physical, mm -hmm. and then the next layer is the etheric body, mm -hmm. and then we have the emotional body, mm -hmm. then the mental. Yeah. And the spiritual. Now, yeah. I, I suspect that the term etheric came into uh, the English language used through the Theosophical Society uh, that took a lot of these ancient teachings right. from India. Yes, and the work of Madame Blavatsky yes. brought this terminology. And it was at a time in the 19th century when the theory of radio transmission uh, incorporated what they called the ethers. It was yes. believed that radio waves traveled right. through the ethers. Now, that's a concept that's been dropped by modern science, but it sort of remains in esoteric literature but just for that historical reason. And there's a parallel in South America America mm -hmm. uh, was spiritualism that emerged. Spiritualism and theosophy were emerging in Europe. Yes, um, spiritism also emerged. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Under the pen name of Alan Kardec. Uh, yes, it's a huge movement. Uh, huge movement throughout Europe and yeah. South America. Yes, because it wasn't being acknowledged and accepted in Europe. He took it to South America, and mm -hmm. now it's it's huge in South America. So the spiritists regard this. Um, etheric body. I'm going to have to ask you to be careful not to touch your microphone. Sorry about yeah. that. They refer it as the perispirit. Mm -hmm. But it's in parallel with, with our understanding of the etheric body. Mm -hmm. And when someone becomes infected uh, or picks up a, a spiritual parasitic infection, uh, it attaches to the etheric body. Okay. So we have to clean it mm -hmm. and keep it um, immune. Mm -hmm. And this this protocol does that, and and it's not so different, I suppose, for uh, people who um, most most people will take a shower, uh, maybe daily, certainly weekly. For the physical body, yes, mm -hmm. but you can also take a spiritual shower mm -hmm. <laughs> using using white light, mm -hmm. um, and different people use different methods to. Yeah. to, to to clean their spiritual, let's call it the spiritual body, shall mm -hmm. we? Uh, one colleague of mine um, uses what he calls the, um, uh, what does he call it now? It's like a, a, um, a sieve. Mm -hmm. uh, picture a garden sieve right. for sifting out stones from soil. Okay. And he will put this sieve at the bottom of his feet and he will shuffle it up mm -hmm. all the way up to the top of his body and clean his mm -hmm. spiritual body with this sieve motion. Okay. Well, what you're suggesting is that through the very power of mental imagery, yes. we are able to uh, cleanse aspects of the subtle body. Yes, that's right. As we go through that process, if anything is discovered mm -hmm. that doesn't belong there, then it has to be um, removed mm -hmm. in an appropriate way, depending on what yeah. kind of infection it is. Mm -hmm. now, and I know most people who are psychic practitioners of one kind or another, healers, mm -hmm. Reiki healers, uh, for example, or psychic readers, have little rituals that they go through in order to uh, not only cleanse themselves, but also to separate themselves from whatever may be going on with the person they're either healing or, or reading. Otherwise, yes. they begin to take on the absolute uh, problems, yes. the karma, the thought forms of the person they're working with. You, you, absolutely, Jeffrey. In much the same way that a, uh, a medical practitioner, a surgeon, mm -hmm. would, would scrub up yeah. um, and ensure that they are germ-free before going into the operating theater. Mm -hmm. So a spiritual healer needs to do the same thing mm -hmm. with the spiritual body.
Now, I should say that I have talked to and interviewed people who are healers and readers who don't do that. Really? Yes. They feel that, you know, they know that other people do it. They have nothing to, to say to fault that practice, mm -hmm. but that's just not part of their particular routine. And I can say just for myself, I don't know where I got this idea, but long ago, I... Um, seem to have come up with the notion that if you identify yourself with the whole universe, you're one with everything, then nothing can harm you. I used to believe that too, mm -hmm. <laughs> until I became infected. Uh -huh. And it was very, very uncomfortable. Yeah. So I had to change my thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, in much the same way, if you're going to step into the realm of healing mm -hmm. and be an instrument of the light, yeah. you're going to attract the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's the enemy. Yeah. So uh, I like to use terminology from my young soldiering days that when I'm going to step into this arena, um, I'm going to do battle with the dark and I need to put my armor on. Okay. Now, let me just share a story with you, if I may. Please. Yeah, you're aware of my book, The PK Man. Yes. And uh, this is a man who had enormous uh, psychokinetic abilities and yes. he sometimes felt he had to teach people lessons because right. he he would go around trying to prove he had these powers and many people were offended that he would uh present himself in that way and they would say bad things about him to his face mm -hmm. and he felt he had to teach them a lesson and yes. i i worked with this man for 10 years and on one occasion we were discussing a demonstration in progress, and he was very proud of the wonderful parts of it that he had accomplished. It was quite amazing, in fact. He had produced a UFO appearance, and he said it would be photographed and published on mm -hmm. the front page of a local newspaper, and three days later, that happened. It was, so, yeah. <laughs> he was very happy with what he had accomplished, and I had the temerity to say to him, well, you didn't do everything you said you were going to do. And he got angry. You challenged him. And he slammed the phone down. And I began to get sick. Within 45 minutes of that event, I, my, I had a bad sore throat. Yeah. And the feeling that you get when you know, oh, this is going to get much yeah. worse. When the sore throat yes. reaches this level, you're getting ready for, you know, I'm going to be sick for a week. Right. And then he called me back. And he said, without saying what he had done or anything. He said, Jeffrey, I'm sorry. I apologize. I will never do that again. And to my surprise, it lifted right, right away. It, it, it went away because he, he was also a healer. But uh, the lesson for me in that is you never know when you're dealing with another human being yeah. what psychic powers they might have. And it, it, it's a good idea to just treat everybody with respect. With respect, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, when you, whenever you treat another human being with disrespect, I think you're opening yourself up to the possibility that they are going to get angry at you. Yes. And if, if they have psychokinetic ability, that anger could uh, have some force. Absolutely. Uh, um People in different cultures around the world use the power of the curse, don't they? Mm -hmm. and, and they do work. And anthropologists have even talked about the uh, uh, death by hexing. Yes. Uh, there yes. are cases on record that where yes. people who, uh, in distant locations had been hexed, didn't know they had been hexed. Right. So it wasn't just a stress response, as some uh, physiologists have suggested, but uh, some sort of a uh, psychic influence, and these people uh, die mysteriously. Yes, absolutely. It can happen. Absolutely. Now, uh, fortunately, I've had no such experiences mm -hmm. in, in my practice. Yeah. But the reason I put together this uh, psychic self-defense um, protocol on YouTube is because recently I've had um, uh, more cases than is usual mm -hmm. of people coming to me um, suffering from some malady. And um, on investigation, I've tried to find out when this began. Um, and it began to emerge that it was because they'd attended some course. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, New Age spirituality has now become huge big business. Yes, it's it only has. got to mm -hmm. Google meditation, mm -hmm. 
uh, tapes. There are thousands of such courses. Thousands of such courses. Now, the principle, Jeffrey, is very, very simple. If you open yourself up to the universe, it's important to remember that the universe is in flux. There's a balance between light and dark. One cannot exist without the other. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to open yourself up to the universe uh, to use the light for healing, you have to acknowledge that there's the opposite. Yes. And if you have no defense against that, you're going to get into trouble. And these people have been coming to me having suffered that um, experience. And, mm. and that's why I put together this protocol. So it's not just for people who want to learn spiritualist practices or healing practices. It's for, for your everyday men in the street. Mm -hmm. Well, what if somebody you know, logs on to your YouTube page and, mm -hmm. and goes through the seven-minute process mm -hmm. And they find that it's uh, it's nice, but it's not really uh, addressing their particular problem. Well, part of the um, the script mm -hmm. that they will hear is that they will go through a procedure, and if it doesn't work, seek help. Mm -hmm. It may be that it may be there's some. In fact, I was demonstrating this to a group of people only this past week mm -hmm. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And we I took them through this process and there was one member in that group who became very distressed and uncomfortable and I could see this happening and I said, I think we need someone here needs help with this. And it yeah, and we did some work and it turned out that she had been carrying infections. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to deal with them on the spot. Now you mean spiritual infections? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There were um there were two nested uh, earthbound entities, mm -hmm. uh, earthbound souls, mm -hmm. and there was a whole cluster of um, alien life forms mm -hmm. that had come through um, a portal, and she'd been affected by these um, infections f for many years, mm -hmm. but now she's okay. Well, of course, a lot of people viewing right now are, are probably wondering just how do you, as a scientist, e evaluate this sort of thing? Um, scientifically, we can we can say that if these experiences occur regularly, and they um, have uh, some kind of uniformity, if they are um, of a like kind, and this is how science works, isn't it? If mm. if a phenomenon has characteristics that are repeatable, yes then it has to have scientific validity. Mm -hmm. If we can't understand how it works within the physicalistic, mechanistic framework, what it means is that these phenomena are occurring outside that framework. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go back to our previous discussion about the work of Vasiliev, mm -hmm. the Russian the physiologist, Russian physiologist in telepathic, Suggestion. Telepathic hypnotic induction. Yes. Mm -hmm. What those experiments were trying to do was to arrive at an understanding of the mechanics of how the suggestion is carried from A to B. Mm -hmm. uh, and they worked on the um, theory that a thought is carried on an electromagnetic wave. Yes. But they could never prove that. In fact, it's pretty much been discounted at at this point because of the uh, inverse square principle. I believe it's known as that the signal does not seem to fall off. Uh, That's right. With distance, and it, it, it's not stopped by Faraday cages or anything. It, nothing stops it. Mm -hmm. But so, what they did actually prove beyond any shadow of a doubt is that the thought. Uh, is not transmitted from A to B. Mm -hmm. The thought is beyond time and space. And this is when it becomes scientifically significant mm -hmm. about what we're dealing with, going back to Frederick Myers that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier and his expanded naturalism. Mm -hmm. The naturalism of these phenomena has to go beyond the time and space box. Mm -hmm. It's a much bigger yeah. fix. Uh, Theoretical framework. Well, once you allow for the possibility of telepathic hypnotic 
induction, mm -hmm. as Vasiliev demonstrated, as uh, Frederick Myers demonstrated. Mm -hmm. uh, these things are well documented yes. at this point. Then we have to ask ourselves, I think, uh, who else out there is trying to manipulate us in that way? And, and sh surely the political parties are, uh, have an interest in, in, uh, manipulating masses of people. Uh, uh, commercial interests have that interest. Uh, well, religions have that interest. We're yeah. being bombarded by uh, influences of this sort on every yes. side. So, firstly, we need to be aware mm -hmm. of the possibility that our thoughts, our feelings, and our behavior can be influenced from external sources, mm -hmm. whether they be human intention, mm -hmm. aliens, discarnate entities, it's now it gets really scary. And this is probably why there's a resistance to these ideas, because as autonomous human beings, we need to feel that we're in control. Yes, most people would say uh, they don't want to consider this worldview because it just opens up the floodgates to any number of superstitions. But they're not superstitions. Mm -hmm. It opens up the floodgates to any number of alternate realities. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the fear. Yeah. But, but these are alternative realities that Western, scientifically minded people feel have been rejected long ago. Yes, but that's, you can reject them in your thinking. Mm -hmm. And mechanistic, sciences of physics and mm -hmm. chemistry can continue to reject them. Yeah. But in everyday human experience, they are everyday regular occurrences. Mm -hmm. And if you want to protect yourself from the flu, you may go to your doctor and get a flu jab. Right. If you want to protect yourself from discarnate spirit entities, then there is a method of doing it. And that is using the psych self-defense protocol. Mm -hmm. and, and there are many different visualizations I'm aware of for yes. psychic self-defense. Yes. One, one that I sometimes find uh, uh, comfortable is the idea that you create around yourself a mirror so that any negative thoughts directed at you just bounce right off and uh, re are reflected back to the sender. Yes, I was having a discussion on this very topic with a, with a friend and colleague only yesterday. Mm -hmm. She was driving me to the airport to come here, and we were talking about this. And she rather objected to the idea that anything negative coming uh, was bounced back and, and could hurt the sender, because uh, she doesn't like the idea of hurting anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. So, mm -hmm. so um, it is a method that does work, mm -hmm. um, but uh, she wanted to toy with the idea that the the energy, uh, rather than being bounced back by a mirror mm -hmm. protection, was transmuted. Into healing energy. Into healing energy. And to send healing energy back to the sender. Exactly. That's an even higher approach, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. And this, this, mm -hmm. this well, is a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. a Buddhist in in fact, I can tell you this. One of the lessons I learned from the PK man mm -hmm. is, is that uh, one of the highest uh, things, the most beneficial things any healer can do is is to send healing energy to people who are considered enemies. Yes. Christ said it in the Bible, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Love thy enemy. Yeah. So there's there's a lot to be said for that. There's a lot to be said for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But other other uh, exercises are to surround oneself with uh, a white light or a golden light or rainbow light. Yes, the, the protocol that I've put together. Mm -hmm. um, you start off with grounding to the earth. Yes, um, and the next, the, the second step is uh, connecting with the source of all that there is, the mm -hmm. creative power of healing mm -hmm. light. So you're you're in between. Uh, the heaven and the earth, mm -hmm. so to speak. And then from the, the heart chakra, from one's own spiritual center. Yes, the heart chakra. Now, you've introduced a new term, chakras. So some of our viewers may not know. It's a pretty commonly used term now, but it refers to what we might call organs of psychic sensitivity. Yes, you're right. And there are seven main ones. Mm -hmm. The heart is at the center. Right. 
there's the solar plexus, mm -hmm. there's, there's the sacral region, which mm -hmm. is the reproductive center. Mm -hmm. uh, you come up to the throat center, the center of communication. Mm -hmm. Then there's the third eye, of yes. the all-seeing third eye, which mm -hmm. has a connection with the pituitary gland, yeah. which the spiritists uh, acknowledge as, as the spiritual antenna mm -hmm. that links the body with mm -hmm. spirit. And then you've got the... Um, the head chakra mm -hmm. at the top that, that opens up. It's a, it's a very complex system that it comes out of tantric yoga. Yes, it does. And um, I once interviewed Joseph Campbell about it, and he pointed out that you can take most of the modern Western psychologies and fit them into the chakra system. Yes, there's a correlation. Yeah, very powerful. So, so, so the... Uh, the the psychic protection um, protocol that I use mm -hmm. acknowledges the, the power of the heart chakra as the center of our spiritual being. And, uh, and it's like switching a light on within mm -hmm. the body. And that light connects all the other chakras together um, and extends outwards, front and back, mm -hmm. and then extends right the way through every cell of the body to the skin and beyond and then reinforces the aura, which is the perispirit or the etheric body, as we mm. talked about earlier. And it creates this shell of protection all around us. And that is our um, spiritual immune system. Well, Dr. Terence Palmer, uh, I feel uh, uplifted just uh, <laughs> by your very description. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you, Jeffrey. And thank you for being with us. Thank you.